Hello there. This is going to be a short video and presentation as a part of the respiratory system chapter of the microbiology class. Uh, I hope you uh, have enjoyed the uh, flu presentation and of course, um, in general, the vaccine presentation. Uh, so, so uh, um, since we are in the middle of the pandemic, I wanted to talk a little bit about uh, the actual virus, the actual agent that caused COVID-19, and of course, the different type of vaccines that are out there, uh, of course, for us to take. Uh, let's move on. So in general vaccines, this is going to be kind of like a summary. Um, in theory, you should have gone through the other presentations and vaccines. Uh, but again, what exactly are the uh, vaccine? What exactly are vaccines? Pretty much in general, right, is pretty much the production of antibodies by an induced stimulus, right? Induced stimulus. So what is that induced stimulus? Well, something get right into our body inside, right? That costs something, right? That stimulus, that immune system get activated and produce something that help us to combat any uh, disease. And this, in this case is, the, you know, to prepare the body for that immune reaction that is caused, of course, by that exogenous agents, right? That comes, it, it can be a virus, a bacteria, fungal infection, including allergens also, get into our body, our body detects that that is not part of our body, and then our immune system do their thing, start eliminating those uh, antigens. We call it antigens. Now, it, it, this is very important to understand um, in order to understand vaccine. Um, and one thing that comes to my mind is like, oh, why would I get the vaccines if I get infected? Well, the thing is, our body is, if you get the vaccine, right, for let's say, uh, let's say COVID-19, for the COVID-19, for this uh, coronavirus, right, you can actually get um, the infection, you can actually get COVID-19, but your body is pre already ready to um, combat the virus. So when the virus get there, this is ready to say, hey, stop here, all right? And um, let's start, you know, our body start fighting, all right? So your body has kind of like a shield, and of course, it have created that sore to start fighting those particles. Now, if you don't have the vaccines, you don't have the sword and you don't have the, feel, the, the shield, then that virus would infect you and can cause harm. Now, later on, I'm going to touch a little bit why is it that some people get very um, infected, very ill, and the other ones are mild. And there's uh, uh, different facts, uh, factors that we uh, need to see on that. Now, there are different types of vaccines. It can be inactivated vaccines. These are very popular in the past or the life attenuated vaccines. These are very, you know, old school. It doesn't mean that they are bad. They're actually pretty good vaccines. Um, messenger MR, uh, RNA or mRNA vaccines, which are the new. These are new, which is pretty much in this case the COVID, uh, whatever caused the uh, for the virus that caused the COVID-19, recombinant proteins uh, or polysaccharides, conjugate vaccines, toxoid vaccines, which um, uh, we have talked about the toxoids and how we can uh, get into, you know, use toxoids as vaccines or as primers to the immune system. And of course, viral vectors vaccines. Now, um, this is uh, like a s small summary of the uh, vaccines and the actual, that, that way you can relate with the inactivated vaccine. For example, the flu, right? The, the, the flu vaccines that we get every year, the hep A or rabies are inactivated vaccines. So in other words, you get this agent, in this case, let's say this is the virus, right? And it's completely inactivated. So it's like, you know, kind of like almost dead, you know, would not infect, would not um, reproduce in your body. And then, of course, your body see it, right? Your body see it 
then of course create antibodies against the agent and of course um, if you get the actual you know uh, active you know very active virus then of course there's going to be already antibodies and then attack that the life attenuated vaccines measles mumps rubella these are the M uh, mmr that all kids would get um uh, you know when they when they born when they're you know uh, from one to two years um, and these are very important um, these were pretty bad diseases in the past now we don't see this uh, anymore thanks to the MMR, uh, MMR vaccines and the chickenpox now chickenpox is actually very peculiar and I get a lot of questions about the chickenpox because we you know if you're a little bit older maybe probably more than um, 30 you know or 35 um, you used to go to what is called uh, the chicken pox uh, parties and pretty much uh, parents would used to bring the children to get the chicken pox get infected and of course um, you go through the illness for a couple of days and after that you will be uh, immune to it now why I'm saying this is very important because people think that they can do this with this disease and you cannot do that you don't know we don't know this too much only like uh, almost two years of research we don't know what's going to happen and we have seen that we don't know how this react normally older people but it's been people in the 20s and 30s that have died or got you know very ill so um, you cannot just do that with uh, Ebola for example um, you know it, it you cannot do that with all the viruses all the disease um, the uh, mRNA as I mentioned before these are the uh, COVID-19 Moderna and Pfizer um, these are not and this is very important too these are not approved yet now when you see the the actual vaccines if you're like me i ask the person you know for normally show me what you're injecting me of course i need to make sure that what i'm getting injected is the correct thing not against anything it's just make sure that you don't make a mistake you know and then inject me with something that is not correct and in the vial is said FDA is not approved by FDA and then you said oh this is not approved and they say it in the news that it's approved well it's been emergency approved okay in order to approve a vaccine it takes um, a lot of years in this case we make the vaccines you know in six months and now it's approved to use it is an emergency approved just because we are in the middle of the pandemic the uh, earlier results uh, were fantastic more than 90 percent effective of your body producing uh, the immune response that it's needed um, but again um, we probably lack of a lot of uh, um, you know of course research a lot of uh, data that you know uh, you know any secondary um, you know illness or etc etc now it's been this is a very simple very simple vaccine the mrnas are very simple vaccines um even though it's you know uh, we don't have we uh, as of pre-covid uh we didn't have a, a uh, an approved mrna uh vaccine uh a lot of different you know important data um, a lot of information of it but far from getting uh, very approved and effective vaccines but this one the preliminary study has been pretty good so we're being uh, using it and the illness after the vaccines had been reported very to be very mild now as of today and today is um, the uh, 13 April Today, the big news was that the Johnson & Johnson vaccines has been in a pause just because there's some people that have developed uh, blood cloth. Now, uh, that doesn't mean that the vaccine is bad. It means that it's causing this, which is, of course, bad. Now, we're talking about eight people out of, like, let's, I think it's more than seven, six, seven million. Now, that doesn't mean that, uh, that because it's just eight people, we're gonna say oh whatever no you know we need to look at the safety of humans these are eight humans it doesn't matter if uh, you know uh, 
a couple of millions of people has been vaccinated uh, and you know with these vaccines and everything was fine we need to figure out what happened now it could be that uh, that this affects certain people that have pre existing um, you know conditions but we don't know so because we don't know we need to make a pause in there just to make sure that we uh, obtain that data and then of course that uh, Johnson & Johnson vaccines can continue at least Moderna and Pfizer right now they're on full motion and <coughs> and working so far the recombinant proteins of polysaccharides or conjugate vaccines like head B shingles uh, the human papilloma virus that you know that vaccines that we get those are um, approved of course vaccines recombinant proteins uh, toxoids like tetanus and diphtheria this is a vaccines when I ask younger people um, oh I don't I remember I got it a long time ago but I don't get it this is a very very rare disease now but very dangerous all right so you would see uh, if you're one of my students you would see uh, later on we have a presentation and a video that we talked about tetanus all right so how this toxin affect uh, our body but um, in the past it was m you know of course more common than now but still i would recommend you to get these vaccines you can get it like uh, every 10 years you get a booster um but you know it is not common but if it happened it uh, it can be very very dangerous and of course they're all the ones that are viral vector vaccines which like uh sputnik which is the russian uh, vaccine or the astrazeneca of course uh, as of an uh, emergency approved um, i'm not 100 percent sure if this is an emergency approved in russia since of course this is russia um so but at least the one that are in the usa are uh, you know emergency uh, approved okay um this is probably you're going to appreciate this more on the PowerPoint than in the video, but these are the type of vaccines, pretty much what we talked about, um, kind of on, on a different way to see um, how the actual uh, molecules look like. As you can see on the live attenuated and inactivated, you can see something that uh, it look like a virus. Okay. Um, so I just want you to, I know in terms of the video, it looks very small, but if you check the presentation, um, you can see that it said heat in here or chemicals. Why it said heat of chemical? Well, we need to inactivate somehow this virus. So because of that, we need to apply certain things to it in order to, in other words, inactivate that, that virus. So because if inactivated, but not completely broken down and stuff like that, right um, then of course when we inject this all right in this case it would be at this point you know it's like pretty much inactivated then of course um, your body would react to it as if it's alive and then create uh, antibodies against or the life attenuated virus this is kind of like weakened virus you know it's fragile it's not gonna cause a real illness to it so um, and then in here you can see pretty much the this is pretty much the table that we saw in here But I just want you to see here. It was just a table in here. You can see um, at, at you know uh, when when you get that injection how the molecules look like um, So the replicating viral vector vaccines This is pretty much a virus that can actually replicate but produce the molecules, right? produce the molecules that we know scientists right um, that we know that produce a specific uh, proteins that we know that the, your body would react into it of course I have to be similar to uh, proteins that this virus would um, have um, that the DNA vaccines this were promising at some point still uh, a lot of you know research and stuff like that personally I worked with uh, 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 well actually most of this we uh, most of this but I remember a long time ago we produce a lot of this for treatment for HIV and stuff like that uh, this is pretty much you inject that specific um, DNA region that DNA goes to your cells um, and then of course the DNA uh, produce a specific proteins 
that uh, these proteins would pretty much uh, get exposed in your body and then your body react to that protein and produce uh, antibodies against the RNA vaccine on the mRNA are kind of like a, again a new thing um, it's kind of it's pretty much like one step ahead of the DNA because this is mRNA ready to go uh, this mRNA would get into the ribosomes right away and produce whatever it is that is important and then of course that proteins would get exposed into your body of the unit vaccines in this case pretty much we uh, produce a, a particle let's say let's say the uh, this is a virus right and um, um, let's say that the virus have you know spheres attached to the capsid right so um, let's say that we know that the body react to these spheres so in other words we create these spheres okay so we are pretty much uh, have these spheres we create these spheres and then these spheres get injected and of course the body will react to the spheres not to any other thing and of course if you get this virus now we have antibodies against those spheres and then of course um, in this case, we, you know, uh, we are uh, sort of protected. Now, let's talk a little bit about the virus. I know you guys are probably tired of listening or, you know, uh, reading about the virus like we all are. But again, this is how the virus looked like. Okay, this is how the virus looked like. It is an RNA virus. Uh, that can infect mammals or bird. At the beginning of the pandemic, it was uh, it was known that some you know pets had actually the virus. Um, of course, the illness is completely different than the, the humans, but the actual dogs and cats um, in the same household that you know people would have the COVID nineteen. Uh, you know they found that the the animals were infected. So that's kind of a little bit creepy in a way, but sometimes, um, you know, these viruses infect only, you know, or either humans or animals and stuff like that. This one um, is kind of like broad spectrum in this case because it can infect, um, you know, other animals. And of course, it would affect the respiratory tract. Right? That's why, you know, the, the, the name, which we're going to go in a second, is an envelope virus. When it is an envelope virus, you know, it have the, the virus has, uh, as we discussed before, right? either the uh, um, RNA or DNA then you have the capsid which are a bunch of proteins protecting that DNA and this have another protection which is the envelope like you can see in here and this spike gives the corona structure like so that is it's called coronavirus because you know those this spikes here these proteins here it kind of look like a corona so you know when you get a picture of it this is of course this is uh, not a uh, uh, you know this is more like a perfect picture of it um but in this case when you see when you uh l look at it in the microscope of course electron microscopy like tem for example like this one you would see uh all these spikes so it would look like this the corona um and it's uh it would have 26 to 32 kilobases which is big for an RNA virus so that's kind of like general information it would look like this uh, this is pretty much uh, the other the coronavirus this is the actual the agent that caused COVID-19 it's very similar uh, very similar virus uh, again the same type of virus you can see here all this projection that make it look like a crown which have the spike protein and you might uh, hear about the spike proteins um a lot and and again it's because these spike proteins are the things that make uh the virus to attach to our cells and then of course get inside the cells which we're gonna go uh, and talk a little bit uh you know later on but as you can see the genetic material it's inside in this case have other proteins that um we're not going to go into very uh details just because this is more related to the vaccines and the uh, actual you know general for the virus but um you have some uh, other specific proteins that are very important for the um release of uh, well introduction to the cells or release of those out of the cells um how is the actual uh cycle uh of the SARS-CoV-2 or the virus that caused uh the COVID-19 well 
you get the virus in there and the virus this is your cell all right this is your cell um our cells would have this thing and i know that in the news they're trying to explain this um, it is very difficult to try to understand this from the news because you know there's people that they don't know what these are there's just reading a script uh, and again it's you know at least they try to do a pretty good job trying to explain to people but um, make sure that you uh, look on the right uh, source of uh, information when you're looking at all these things um, and of course I have heard a lot of different you know media media social media explaining things not the right way so please look at the uh, scientific uh, uh, in real scientific information not whatever somebody says in the social media and stuff like that all right uh, that's a good note so the virus would attach to the ACE2 receptors that we have in our cells how I'm gonna explain you a little bit later but this is the way that the virus get inside when this uh, happened right when this happened there's some other things that have to happen it's not just attach and get in right but this is the way that the virus enter the body and when the virus entered the body the virus would want to reproduce this is why the virus you know uh, every every organism you uh, want to reproduce right in order to uh, you know in order to live now in this case do you guys remember viruses are not really alive and that, but that's another uh, class of discussion let's imagine that the virus are sort of alive which they are now because a viruses need a host and this this cells is the host so these viruses want to reproduce and the way that reproduce is the material the genetic material would get released in the cells and in this case the ribosomes our ribosomes right um, pretty much get those uh, that genetic information to produce all the genes necessary to produce the actual virus you know the capsid all the proteins and you know to be assembled etc this is another very important thing in terms of treatment uh, the release of the viral uh, uh, RNA in the cells reproduce you know with the ribosomes it, it pretty much produce um, you know all the uh, possible uh, proteins that need for your assemble uh, by uh, uh, one of the most important thing would be the translation on the viral polymerase this enzyme is very important and why I want to make this clarification now because later I'm going to talk about one specific treatment that they actually using uh, for this virus and it works so this uh, RNA polymerase would pretty much it, it is the uh, protein that would get attached uh, to uh, you know uh, the genetic material to uh, multiply let's just say that to multiply uh that um, genetic material that way you know imagine that we have a lot of genetic material here right then what we need to do is just encapsulate that genetic material right assemble those proteins produced from that genetic material and now we have virus in there right so that's pretty much why it's very important but later on you'll see why it makes a little bit more sense so rna replication happen right so now we have all this and now what we need to do is pretty much produce um, all those proteins in order to assemble the virus and then of course the virus is ready to go and infect other cells okay how they got the name all right how uh, you know how we named it so phases uh, first it was discovered of course in uh, 2019 so it was pretty much called the novel coronavirus because it was new and it was a coronavirus so um, the actual disease it was called COVID-19 so you get the virus right the virus is the uh, 2019 novel coronavirus and of course the disease is actually COVID-19 so the virus was the SARS-CoV-2 2 because it's the second virus that caused something very similar which we call it severe acute respiratory syndrome all right severe a, a from Q R so SARS syndrome. We have have this coronavirus before, especially another severe acute respiratory syndrome or SARS in 2003. 
that outbreak, but that outbreak was just an outbreak, not really a um, you know a pandemic like right now. Uh, and of course, it was coronavirus too because we have this, so we have to name it too. Um, so the COVID nineteen get his uh, name by this uh, acronym that stands for pretty much Corona. So to get the C O virus, V I disease COVID, and of course it was from the 19 okay so that's how they pretty much name it at that point this is something very important that i want to uh, tell you uh, and this is a good example just compared to hiv they're not related at all uh, other than their rna uh, viruses but the virus is the hiv for the you know the hiv virus right that the agent that caused aids uh, and this this the sars cov2 right this is the virus the actual disease is called AIDS and the disease is called is called COVID-19 okay so you know we call it the COVID virus well in theory is you know it's the AIDS virus but I just want you to have the correct nomenclature HIV is the disease SARS-CoV-2 is the disease the actual uh, I'm sorry the virus and the actual disease is like let's say for the HIV virus is AIDS and this for the SARS-CoV-2 virus is COVID-19 so at least you have that nomenclature uh, remember I mentioned the ACE2 receptor this is very important to understand and scientific uh, you know uh, the scientists looked at this as probably the most important thing to understand the disease future treatment um, not necessarily vaccines although of course it's very very uh, important for the vaccine um, and, and I want to mention here uh, I hope that you have watched the uh, flu um, presentation and video you guys remember there's one this this specific uh, treatment which is called uh, uh, oseltamivir uh, uh, and pretty much what it is is you know the flu virus had some spikes also uh, get this let's say that this is um, uh, let me delete that. they said that this is a cell it have some receptors also you similar to the coronavirus the way that it enters so the virus the flu virus get attached there get inside reproduce and then these things here right these things here attached to the spikes of the virus right so when the virus comes out right it's not just come out because the virus has the same spikes that had at the beginning when it actually entered the cell right so this virus get out but still attached to this parts here this receptor just because again if it's coming out right by attaching here when you know I'm sorry in the cells when attached here when when they go out you know of course they have the same protein so it they would attach here there's some things that happen right some things that happen that make the virus detach from there and of course that virus can infect other cells right that medication so let's say like if we develop a strategy of vaccines you might think well i don't want this virus to reproduce a lot so let's attack this attachment here which is pretty much the uh, pretty awesome strategy um right or you know any treatment or drug that can actually attach to this receptor or attach to here uh, there's a lot of different things like that but in terms of oseltamivir oseltamivir uh, pretty much inhibit right inhibit this mechanism here right whatever helped the virus to detach from this receptor and then get released the oseltamivir what it does is pretty much um it won't let this happen so the virus so the virus stayed attached to the cell after reproduce inside the cell so because this virus cannot go right and you know infect other cells then your immune system attack the virus and kill it okay it's an awesome strategy it's a very good and effective medicine if you get um, you know if you get diagnosed with the flu and of course you get it on the early stages um, then of course it's very very effective um, but again we're not talking about flu but this is probably a little bit um, important to understand what I'm going to talk about the ACE2 receptor now again this is very interesting it could be a little bit difficult to understand for people that don't have like you know 
um, broad knowledge on this case. Um, I will leave a link under uh, this video. Uh, this uh, video that I found in YouTube, um, it's this guy explained it perfectly. So if you are interested to understand a little bit more about it, I would leave the description. Uh, I mean the link in the description on the description, and then you can get more information about it. So this ACE2 receptor is the angiotensin converting enzyme A2. That's why ACE2 receptor. Um, we would have it in lungs, arteries, heart, kidneys, and this is you know on, on those cells, right? The cells, and it would have these receptors um, in the cells. Right um, now, in order to see the ACE2, we need to see what is what are those ACE receptor. The ACE receptor renin angiotensin system is very important to control. One of the few things is to control blood flow. Okay, um, so in other words, imagine the 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 you know how the blood get either you know I need you know high pressure, low pressure, uh, you know how the blood is gonna flow. So we use this ACE. Uh, system. Now a lot of hormones are secreted and when we talked about hormones don't get scared or oh, hormones. No, hormones are important things for signaling and everything in the body is signaling. If you, you know, let's say that if you need something here you send a signal, right, signal, and then just to get these things that can actually help me to do whatever function it is. Okay, it's uh, everything in the body works as a signal. So, um, so again, it, because our cells would have this in order to control the uh, blood flow and stuff like that, it is pretty much very perfect strategy for the virus to, you know, have a mechanism to attach to this because our cells would have that. So remember, the virus is not smart. The virus are just particles that exist and somehow somehow this happened right this happened and of course it is a good strategy not that the virus developed that strategy but it's a good strategy because we have those receptors and of course the virus attached there let's say that we have that this virus would attach to um, you know this receptor let's just put it that way right just this receptor but we only have these receptors in um, in at specific cells in our body let's just say uh, just for the heck of the in uh, you know this example let's say that we only have these cells in our um, fingers all right let's say we only have this in our fingers so if we touch it then of course we can acquire the virus um, but again if we don't touch it then we're good if we have if we put gloves we're good okay so it doesn't really work like that but it's a good example i guess uh, or let's say that we only have this receptor in our ear so if we don't get in touch with our ears right and we cover our ears then this virus cannot you know reproduce because they cannot get in touch with our ears now in this case these viruses are so small get into our respiratory system of course by you know we breathe right we have to breathe and of course infect our lungs and because we first got, we have these receptors in our lungs again perfect strategy right but one thing that always uh, you know I always ask is you know how these viruses pretty much develop these strategies pretty much they don't and I'm gonna go and explain that in a second right but let's go back to the ACE receptor a little bit so um, we use this in order to uh, or, or you know the body use this to control flow so let's say that uh, we need uh, uh, you know for some reason we need a high uh, more you know more flow of our blood then the signal happen and then it tells let's say you know like the kidneys for example to um, you know do not absorb too much salt because we need a lot of you know let's say sodium in our body in order to increase our, our blood uh, pressure or another signal would be just to decrease the diameter let's say that this is a vein right um, and this is a vein a normal vein so in order to create more flow maybe we can uh, make this vein a little bit or vein or arteries a little bit smaller right and if we reduce a little bit that diameter now the flow you know it's you know more pressure create more pressure remember when you get a garden hose and all right let's say that this is a garden hose and then you put your finger in here right let's say this is a finger right 
right and then of course you get more pressure than if it's a garden hose right a garden hose that just right a regular pressure so you create pressure by what by reducing the diameter of this so again it's the same thing so because of that it's always changing if you need more flow all right or less flow and a lot of things are produced right in order to control that so uh, so because of that uh, you know this is this receptor is very important uh, but again something that we need something that we have now just put in perspective what we have seen so far right what are the people that say you know let's say uh, let's say uh, rather than 40 or less than 40 let's just put 40 as a magic age so have you seen uh, a lot not there's of course always people that are teens or even in the 20s or 30s with you know problem with uh, with blood pressure and stuff like that but in general in general population you normally see like when you hit the 30 40 you start having health problem or you know maybe the pre the blood pressure increase a little bit and I, i'm an example of that i my pressure my blood pressure it was pretty much perfect all my entire life and then after i hit 40 then the pressure uh, start increasing a little bit i don't know about 50 yet uh, <laughs> but again your body would start changing you know and of course if we need to control just put this in perspective if your body a human body need to control the blood in this case just this particular example when you hit 40 or more 50 or when you get older you your body need to control the pressure versus a young person that you know your body is you know with regular pressure it doesn't need to control that pressure why would your body would have a lot of ACE receptor if you're young right because you don't need to control your blood pressure but when you're getting older you need to control the pressure your body have has to have more receptors right more receptor in order to control that so this is directly related to what why people are getting more infected right or more ill um, when they are uh, you know older than younger because the um, the infection that happened in this case the virus would um, get um, you know a high amount of you know the viral load would be higher in older people than in younger people so it's higher all right the viral load is high versus low on younger people now of course there's other factors okay so it could be a younger people a, a younger person that uh, got exposed or, or have had high exposure to the virus so of course the viral count would be you know bigger or higher i would say than another person there's a lot of different factors but just put in perspective this you know if let's say that we are in a perfect world of an experiment um, and the viral load would be you know the same exposed to a younger versus a uh, older but if a lot of more virus can get inside the cells right versus let's say that th let's just put an example here so this four cells versus two cells so uh, and we in get you know a hundred virus uh, it's just put a number so a hundred virus spread in here let's say it spread in here there's more viruses that would get inside this pe person's um, cells versus in this one why because they have more potential right potential and have higher amounts of ACE receptors versus the lower amount and again this is not just the only reason uh, why there's other factors and again this is publications that are coming out now and people you know uh, are understanding this virus but again uh, if you want to understand a little bit more go to the description uh, and get that and this is a very curious example that I want uh, to uh, to say just to go perfectly with this example here imagine that you're this guy right and just imagine that you have a big fan in here so how I do a fan look like a flower right and it's turning this is the worst fan ever let's just write fan that way you know that that's a fan right and then you have this person and you have another person let's say that this one has previously glued 
uh, you know, have glue in it, and this one, no glue, right? Then we have a bunch of feathers in here, and we turn on the fan. Which one of these two, this one or this one, would have, when we turn off the fan, more feathers attached to it? Of course, this one, because there's glue and feathers attached to the glue, or even like the wet surfaces and whatever. So this is pretty much, you see this, represent your older body versus a younger body with less receptors to get for the virus to get in so of course this one will have a higher viral load versus this one so of course the immune reaction let's say that these are two perfectly you know regular healthy person in terms of you, the, the immune system so of course uh, the immune system would start but imagine that your immune system have to fight just to put a number, this is very low to be viral low to cause a disease. But let's say that you your system have to, um, you know, work against a thousand viruses versus let's say a younger person a hundred. So of course, of course, your immune system. Let's say that if the there's no variants and your immune system are identical, it's easier for the immune system to attack a hundred versus a thousand. It would take longer, so you would be more, they would say more ill. Is that the correct word for, to say there? Uh, so in that case, again, it, there's a lot of different factors, but this could be a very important factor. This is another great example that I wanna uh, that I wanna uh, tell you, and it goes just trying to answer this question: How the virus developed these strategies? They do not develop those strategies. It's just happened, and how that happened, I'm gonna try to explain you in a second. So for this example, um, like I said, it, it kind of looked like a bunch of drawings, like a kindergarten example, but I think um, for some people that are more visual, um, this would be an excellent uh, example. All right, so for the example, imagine that uh, that this is uh, a way to, to, for, to transfer something um, any you know any mechanisms and, uh, and then the cells would have these molecules that react somehow and then this get for you know in the way of transportation this close the lid in here and then this is how it get transferred to the cells this is just like the regular mechanism now I'm going to explain you how the virus work just using this so what it is is all these viruses that are here present right again they don't develop this strategy it's just happen that have this specific mutation that have these different shapes these are the same virus it's just happen happen that has the different shape so imagine that this gets somehow attached here right somehow so this will come here right the mechanism of transferring and then this uh, uh, cannot close so what happened is the immune system would come here and eat the virus and then of course the virus would get eliminated so this is not a developed strategy it's just it happened that have this shape and it's not really convenient for the virus to have this shape because it cannot get inside the cell same thing happened with this one this one cannot get very good attached there it comes to the mechanism of transferring uh, the lid doesn't close <clears throat> not going anywhere immune system would eat it now let's say this one this one is very similar look at this this is almost there it get inside but you know the lid kind of close and kind of no so maybe some of them would pass some of them would get eaten by your immune system so of course this shape is not ideal maybe reproduce sure but the viral load would be less on this one because it's not it doesn't have a great mechanism what happened with this one check out this one this one fit perfectly very similar to the regular regular right the actual regular mechanism check this out when it gets there in the way of transferring this it's perfect fit this get transfer to inside the cells and inside the cell what's gonna happen this happened oops no this happened it reproduced and now we have millions of millions of copies of this virus that in the thousands right and the millions a lot so of course now if we compare which one would stay in the population this one that got eliminated this one that got 
partially reproduce or this one that can actually reproduce in the thousands so of course this is the virus this mutation right is the one that rep that got reproduced and multiplied so this is the one this is the virus that actually would stay in there and infect our cells right so they pretty much do not develop this strategy this is just it happened in nature that you know it is just the way it is you know because of these mutations are more favored to others in this case because of this mutation uh, facilitate this virus to get transported inside the cell and that's why the virus one that a virus one to reproduce and of course that's why we get a lot of copies of that virus so the other mutations that happen before that pretty much um, do not reproduce so they would die and this one are the one that would be dominant in nature all right so let's uh, move on now there are treatment for it treatment for it right now in terms of the actual uh, you know oh, sorry the actual disease um, there's some treatment that uh, of course that we know now more than what we know at the beginning um, one of the thing is oh people say oh they don't people don't die now that's fake well you know why people still people are dying but are less people dying just because now in general we know how to treat it a little bit better than before Okay, maybe in a couple of years we can actually get rid of the virus uh, at all or or not. But hopefully we can. We actually can. We have something that's called remdesivir, which is an antiviral um, um, medication. And this chemicals we use steroids just to try to control the um, the inflammation and you know the overreacting um, immune system or there's actually a monoclonal antibody which in, in this case this mimic the natural immune response and normally this are for high-risk patient on early stages a lot of people uh, that actually that I know of um, had well not necessarily that I know of but that I have talked to them even though I know them that um, got the actual uh, monoclonal antibody treatment um, normally people that are either nurses or doctors that you know uh, they need to be there we cannot lose doctors or nurses or you know help from work on the health related right um, you know they have have this um, this treatment and again this is pretty much to help the um, you know body to uh, you know to to help in that immune response so let's say you know if you have a monoclonal antibody pretty much you are injecting antibodies into your body and then this antibody attaches to the virus and this is pretty much saying hey I got the virus so your body react to those antibodies and said okay uh, yeah I need to go there and start eating this virus because of course it's targeted with this um, so so it is actually um, very interesting and this is something that is not new something that you know we know for um, for years and years uh, and but of course it does not necessarily work the same for all the virus remdesivir is another thing that they're using right now um, is again it's an antiviral and what it is is uh, in other words it's a substitute of uh, it pretty much act as a substitute of specific nucleotides and and then the RNA polymerase when it actually remember when I mentioned that the R uh, the RNA uh, the RNA or right, the genetic material let's say that it's like that right and the, all the bases and then the RNA polymerase come here to replicate that to multiply right to replicate and of course in the nucleotide adenine Timine, aha, uh -huh. no, this is RNA, right? Uracil, cytosines, and guanine. So make sure this was part of the exam too, right? Make sure that it's no thy no time meaning here because it's RNA. Um so uh so again it needs those nucleotides to start putting all these nucleotides in here, right? So what it does is this uh an analog to nucleotides and then um and pretty much uh, when when the RNA detect those analogs pretty much cannot replicate and it stopped the replication so in other words if we don't have uh, the the genetic material replicated then what are we going to do with the capsid we cannot create a capsid in order to uh, get that uh, genetic material 
uh, encapsulate it and you know create the virus so in other words it's like this you, you know let's, let's do let's look at the diagram so this is the virus the virus get in here so of course inject the genetic material the ribosome um, pretty much translate all the uh, important proteins but one of the most important is the uh, <clears throat> this RDRP, which is the RNA-dependent RNA polymerase, and this is what I'm talking about. This is the one, the enzyme that take care of all that replication of the DNA. So what the Rendesivir does is it get there, this get metabolized in your body and create that, uh, you know, active molecule that it's uh, pretty much the analog of uh, one of those nucleotides. And then when the RNA use that, right? Uh, and try to attach those nucleotides to the RNA molecule, it kind of stops. It doesn't like it. This RNA uh, doesn't, uh, the uh, polymerase doesn't like that and pretty much stop that replication in there. So if it stops the replication, pretty much uh, inhibition is uh, it's a cause in here. So pretty much there's no replication. So if there's no replication of the genetic material, then you're done. You're good you stop the reproduction of the virus. Um, now, a lot of patients that are get, get hospitalized get remdesivir right now, um, and this is working very, very good. This was developed for, um, you know, retroviruses, e Ebola, uh, HIV, and, you know, in the early stages, it, you know, they, they, they tried it and it works uh, pretty well. Um, it's very, very interesting. Um, a little bit difficult to understand at the beginning if you go to very molecular level, but it's super interesting. Recommend you to uh, look for information if you actually like all these things. Uh, if you really want further discussion, we can discuss that later on. But this is an extremely awesome thing. Like uh, when I remember when I saw this at the beginning of the pandemic, um, how they wanted to use this drug and i was like wow if this work it would be good and it actually uh it's been working i know actually people that got hospitalized uh that uh, they 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 use rendesivir and and you know they got way better like quicker than than not or even people that uh, doctor have said that if we didn't have rendesivir um you know it could have been worse so I mean, it's, it's working. Again, it's not perfect, uh, but it's working. So, um, you know, uh, again, in the future of vaccines and all that, just because of the pandemic, would, it is very bright. Like, um, um, a lot of things are moving faster than normal. And eventually, uh, I think it would get into a point that it would be, you know, way better and exponentially in terms of knowledge and, and what we know, uh, pretty good. Um, so again, um, I recommend you to look for information about this, although um, this is, m again, the mechanisms are going to be a little bit more difficult, at least for this level, but recommend you to go and look for, uh, for information and read about it. It is a new thing, like why I have this at this point in the presentation, not at the beginning, right? Um, it is a new thing? It's no, no. People are saying, oh, this coronavirus created by the government, this and that. Hey, look, those are, you know, theories that I'm not going to touch. But again, this is not a new thing. The first virus was discovered in the 60s. Um, it was pretty much like a crown-like. That's what it was called, a uh, corona. Corona is crowns in Spanish. Um, there are seven coronaviruses that are known, like, like these are the names in here, right? This is pretty much similar, like a cold, and then you're good to go. Um, again, you probably have had other coronavirus before and infections, and you didn't know that it was coronavirus. When you say, oh, I have a cold, it could be that. It could be other viruses. And of course, the more severe are the SARS in the 2002-2003 MERS, which is pretty much very similar to the SARS. It was the Middle East Respiratory Syndrome. Uh, and of course, the agent that caused the COVID-19. So it's, it's not a new thing. Um, okay, it's not a new thing. Uh, it's the same. I remember uh, years ago when the H1N1 again. Oh, it's a new thing. This is a no. It's not. We have discovered that long time ago, uh, or not discovered. We all seen it. So again, um, you know, these things exist. It's just they 
get mute they mutate from one to the other and then new are uh, created um, now in order to finalize this video I want to show you the different vaccines that are actually working um, this is pretty much a good example of how the classical uh, platform works uh, as we mentioned before the inactivated virus or the attenuated virus protein subunits uh, pretty much this is kind of like a subunit from this and then of course we expose this to the body and the body creates antibodies against this so when we actually get the actual virus we actually recognize that portion of the virus um, again one problem not necessarily with this it, one problem would be if the virus uh, modified this protein then of course it's a new subunits of a virus so now the the uh, immunity that we develop against that is not um, enough just because the virus mutated or the virus like particles which is pretty much a virus that doesn't have genetic material so it's, it's very similar to the uh, original virus and when it get into the body then it creates the immune reaction of course the ge next generation um, uh, platforms are the actual viral vector so it's a virus right that doesn't cause or harm you that inject the genetic material into your cell so in there and then in here it pretty much coded all the genes that are uh, enough to create that immune reaction it could be to expose like specific proteins like this one and now your body naturally produces this protein um, with pretty much things that you eat right uh, proteins that you eat those nucleotides are the same from a burger to create this <laughs> protein and get exposed uh, DNA is the same uh, you know in, we inject the DNA instead of using a virus we inject it in the muscles get inside um, the RNA the same thing just uh, we're using it um, right now and of course uh, other or other type of uh, antigen uh, percent of cells too. Uh, all these are pretty much a clinical trial or were a clinical trial of course the mRNA uh, right now um, on an emerg uh, emergency approval okay um, this is here because I want to just to put it again just to make sure that you understand how uh, this happened and we talked about the immune response and all that um, if you haven't taken immunology uh, or just like a general biology thing and now a little bit in microbiology um, just make sure that you understand this how it happened I left this uh, the glossary here because you can read the different uh, terms and the definitions but what it is is pretty much when you get the virus the virus entered the body and again to replicate right um, then pretty much uh, your body would start reacting right you start, uh, start reacting and, and again we would see that antigen is something that we detect in the virus right and like in this um, so we destroy the virus and these cells there's some specific cell that get a part of that virus that they destroyed and present hey this is the thing that we need to kill this is the thing that we need to kill so in other words this comes here and then this cells the helper the cd4s or you know different t-cells that recognize that i said okay we need to create something while this one are still fighting the virus and try to kill them this other part of your immune system are actually saying okay we need to develop something that we can actually kill this all right we need to so in other words there's two lines of working you know two working lines the cell mediated immunity which pretty much are killer cells these are all right you know what let's send the artillery and start uh uh, killing and, and try to either kill the cells or ki we need to get rid of that so if this is a cell uh, don't worry we can create more cells let's kill the cell or let's kill the virus let's kill that so this is pretty much the artery that is working hard this is when you get the fever this is when you get inflammation this is when you get all these things the other one is the antibody mediated immunity in this case this is this is not force this is like this is more force and strong you know be strong and this is more the smart one this is not force this is you know the plan thing you know and, and this is pretty much the way it, the way it is sometimes we need muscles sometimes we need um, 
we need not necessarily muscle we need the plan this is more like a plan all right so in this case the b cells produce antibodies and then this can actually neutralize the virus these antibodies attach to the actual virus imagine a bunch of this and this is telling hey the force come and start killing this because i'm um, the antibody recognizing and stopping this virus um, so this is kind of like a very very mild summary of the um, in, you know how the immune response happened and from here we can have a different strategies to create uh, the vaccines these are the actual vaccines that are working right now Pfizer Moderna are the more popular these are uh, pretty much um, RNA uh, viruses um, and I wanted to include the type doses how effective and there was a um, you know in some places there's a sh you know um, less uh, less of less a good strategy for storage and stuff like that but uh, not everybody would have a minus 70 degrees um, freezers to to um, you know um, to uh, have this you know safe at the same time this is not just a regular freezer these are medication for people so these freezers and all that have to be approved that can actually maintain this temperature for long periods of time it's not that you can just put it oh i put it in the freezer regular freezer and that's good it doesn't work like that you need to make sure these are for people so these are regulated things that you need to make sure that you can have that the astrazeneca is a viral um uh, vector uh again in this case look at the the you know it's regular free temperature the sputnik is also a viral vector that was modified this is more of a russia thing in here in the united states we're using uh this and of course uh it's not here but johnson and johnson uh, that have a hiccups but um, is there so again the these are the strategy uh, the Moderna Pfizer are most popular the J&J &J that we talked about that is more of a viral vaccine um, and in this case uh, you know uh, just go through this this is pretty much information that I just told you already but uh, different diagrams for you to see at the same time also information of you know data doses and stuff like that storage so um and again sometimes oh we have a very uh poor rollout well uh sure but at the same time just think about all the strategies that we need to have in order to have a minus 70 ma minus 20 versus you know room temperature or like fridge temperature okay and of course the type of strategy that it is um, and again these are all diagrams for you to see uh, um, and again um, these are pretty much approaches how to make the vaccine so you can see this is the whole virus so you can actually attenuate it kind of kill it a uh, parts that triggers immune response so we can remove those parts and use those parts or we can actually go to the genetic material and get that genetic material to create those parts in our body not the whole virus all the this parts and then of course your same body would expose this to the immune system create vaccines against that uh, the other thing is like you know just to have an activated vaccines the life but attenuated vaccines and of course the viral vector which this virus would not affect infect you only infect this dna and in here we can again uh, as i mentioned before have those molecules coded in the uh, in the genetic material to produce the uh you know that those proteins and then of course get exposed to and this is again um the this is a kind of like a all well it is all uh considered now right um the strategies that they were taking at that point um for uh, the different vaccines uh, for that so uh, and again uh, one thing in order to finish this again I know that there's always concerns of how to get uh, you know if you're gonna get vaccinated or not um, vaccines in general are are safe uh, of course um, if you know that you are a person with uh, allergic reactions or prone to uh, allergic reactions just talk to your doctor um, and then they can figure out what exactly it is if it's safe for you or not but 
um, in order to get rid of this, we need to have a lot of people with the vaccines. That way, if you, for example, if a person, and, and this is the thing, people are saying, oh, why would get in the vaccine if you're going to get infected? Again, this is a person without the vaccine. This is a person vaccinated. And this is a person that has COVID, right? Let's say that, that with COVID. This is what happened. Vaccinated, no vaccine, right? Vaccinated, no vaccine. This is what happened. We talked 15 minutes, and we talked 15 minutes with this person, right? What happened here? This person that do not have the vaccine talked 15 minutes with this person, and let's just, just for the heck of putting a number, this is not really true, but let's say that he got exposed to a thousand doses of the virus. And this same person got exposed. I already explained this example before, but I want to go over that. This is person which is vaccinated got exposed, right? What happened here is this thousand um, viruses are getting there, infecting, and your body are doesn't have any antibodies. So your body starts fighting. There's an immune reaction, immune reaction, that happen, inflammation, that's going to happen. So you're going to get ill, okay? This person has already, the immune system has been primed, right? Because it has been primed when it get exposed, probably get infected, sure or not, depending how, how the immune system is. And that's the thing. Each person is different. Maybe this thousand get down to 500 or to 200 by the time you feel ill. So your body is actually priming that because it start killing this. In this case, it's starting with a thousand. In this case, it's starting with 200. What happening here is maybe this person cannot infect other people because the viral, this is most important word, viral load is low. So this person here would not infect other people or the probabilities are low because it has been vaccinated. While this one here, right, has the coronavirus, has a lot of virus, and the viral load is high. So this person can infect other people, okay? So again, the vaccine is important to protect yourself, doesn't get ill or very ill, but at the same time is to protect the population. And unfortunately, people, are, people don't care on protecting others, right? And again, you're getting the vaccine to protect yourself first, sure, your family, but at the same time, other people, okay? So in this case, this is what we need to do. We need to get vaccinated to protect yourself first, but of course to protect other people. Because if you get the coronavirus and if you've been vaccinated, you probably would infect less people or none versus if you're not vaccinated, you get the coronavirus, you can actually infect more people because viral load would be different. And that's another thing. Another variable is maybe this person got very ill because the viral load is higher than lower. And this other person got the coronavirus, but the viral load was that initial infection. Okay. And again, go, it, it, everything is a circle, right? <laughs> Life is a circle. Um, you guys remember the chapter and we talked about the portal of entries and the amount of the antigen that is needed in order to uh, produce a specific, uh, you know, disease, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. We talked about that with toxins and stuff like that. It is the same thing. Sometimes toxins, um, that in you know one specific toxin in low amount can actually harm you, and for other type of toxins, it's a higher amount. It's the same thing here with this different diseases, different viruses. Okay, maybe you get more ill if you get higher amount of the virus because your body cannot fight at the same time that many virus versus a low amount.
okay so again um, I was trying to put this video together just to explain it on the uh, easy side but of course uh, normally we talked about uh, a new thing new disease and stuff like that so I really wanted to talk a little bit about this I know most of this information if you like to read you have read it please read on good um, you know uh, if you look in online and stuff like that scientific articles are the best way to look for it or good sources of information not just whatever people would say i remember seeing this and unfortunately i don't have the picture but i'm just going to draw it here all right so this is the sun right this is a hole in here right and this is a wall a brick wall all right there's a big uh tank of water here with a hole and there's a lot of water coming out here but it's sunny it's just this water water is coming out of this tank right so there's two people one person with a ladder here observing like this and they said oh my god what a beautiful day so sunny and so good this other person is here looking through the hall and it said you are lying because it is pouring rain it is pouring water here okay this represents science this represents social media and it's perfectly true we think that everything is what we see read in places that are not and not trusting the sign we need to look at the signs all right we need to trust this okay we need to look at the big picture the whole thing instead of just what we want to see okay just pay attention to those things sign is the other thing science is not always um uh you know uh, right but we try to look based on data and observation we try to make it right all right i hope you pretty much uh, uh understand the video like it and see you next time